probably will open up more opportunity for, I, I know most of you guys are from uh, product design or startup background. Uh, we will also talk about, you know, how to make some money out of this, because that's what matters for uh, most of the startup guys. So this topic, uh, when I was asked to take it up, what came to my mind? I'll share my thoughts and I'll ask my friends to take over. Today we have an interesting panel members, each one of them, you know. If you look at uh, their background is very unique. We have somebody with uh, ecosystem activities. We have someone with uh, inbuilt hardware security design. We have someone who is capable of using that security design to develop applications and product. And there is another person who makes money out of these two guys because they, they handle IP course for both these sectors, right? So the, the, we have a, that is an interesting panel and I, I just want to, you know, talk about uh, my friends. Hello, sir. I will I'll help you to make some money if you could join our discussion, right? So if you look at this banking industry, I just want to take back to you to way back in 1999 when I was one of the first ATM users in India when Citibank set up their experimental ATM center in Bangalore. Believe me guys, nobody was interested in take up an account in Citibank because if you walk into that branch, 100 rupees walk-in fee. That 100 rupees was big money those days. So from that time, today if you look at, bank is no more a place where you go, bank is coming to each one of us. That is the transition what we saw in the last uh, 30, 25 or 30 years. What made that happen is this transformation where devices, hardware driven, embedded driven and even applications on the top of that. That is the transition which we saw. We also see this digital transition which we call it. I call it 360 digital transformation. What I am saying is, today products are designed digitally, tested digitally, deployed digitally, maintained digitally. So that is the world which we are living in. Now, when you go in that route, the biggest challenge today what we are facing is security. If security was not an issue, we would have experimented more things, right? And uh, I started in the defense industry in 90s where uh, these issues were not even discussed in the civilian space. But today, if you ask me, some of these attack stories, what people are talking about, you know, sensing a device based on the radiation coming out of your, you know, financial services device, which is very popular in the defense industry, where, you know, we are using a P-8 uh, maritime surveillance aircraft to sense for a submarine. That's exact replica you can see in, in the financial sector. So it's so complex. On the other side, where the money comes in, that's where actually startup community would be more interested. Every country talks about today critical infrastructure protection. Olden days, financial sector was not included, but now almost all the countries is including BFSI under critical infrastructure protection. Now, if you really want as a country to be resilient, sustainable, we need indigenous products. Without that, it is not going to happen. All our devices today, what is coming in the market, I'm not saying all, majority, is coming from our resources where a firmware update can make the device to run in a different way. So we don't know what data you are passing beyond the borders. And uh, in government, many of the requirements, you know, we have this border sharing procurement policy. You cannot mm. buy anything from a border sharing country. I expect similar policies to come in the financial sector also. That means each one of you are standing here, sitting here, has got an opportunity to make money. So why I mentioned is some of you guys were probably not showing interest in the previous one. Here there is an opportunity. That's why I mentioned this part. I work for a British company where we help most of the semiconductor companies, automotive companies, uh, people who make uh, financial products to make it the software part of the game safe and secure. With this background, you know, I will turn the to, to, uh, ball towards um, Mohan. He, you know, he, he comes from a different background, you know, he's a hardcore, you know, guy. Check, check. Mohan, your views on this particular topic. Yeah, so uh, I think uh, most of us here are on the software security, software-based security. Software-based, when I say you work on the application level layer 7, 
on the OSI model if you ask or layer 6 or layer 5 to an extent but uh, our company chip spirit so uh, I'm representing chip spirit we put spirit on the chips by the way that is why chip spirit okay the chips are the semiconductor chips not the potato chips okay so that's another aspect of it so uh, we work on the layer uh, on the physical layer okay where the transactions at electrons level will take place for the digital infrastructure when I say that I mean the products that we do design in our company are don't have any operating system so they don't have any operating system they don't have any core there is no Intel no Microsoft okay no AMD so it's coreless design and uh, the we have filed eight patents on that so that is the level of hardware security we are working on with Indian defense Indian defense in terms of we are working with Indian Navy today and we are working for certain we are supplying our products to certain for data diode and I mean different applications on encryption specifically so they are more interested in because as you said right border across the border or border joining they are not they don't want Microsoft to say okay accept my terms of use Okay, and tomorrow if uh, Microsoft is uh, taken by the law, okay, by their country law to open up some uh, flash into your mobile, okay, and get your OTP or your, not OTP, the password with which you access your mobile, it's in the flash, by the way. So the flash memory controller will give them whatever they need, okay, through, through the uh, hooks, which are debug hooks, or there are multiple ways to actually get to that which are all hardware based which are all in semiconductor embedded within the uh, within the physical layer okay so and when we talk about the network okay so in the network the data link layer so there also our uh, i mean we have ips where we protect the whole infrastructure create a tunnel without any software without any operating system so that is the uh, semiconductor level of uh, i mean uh, devices products that we are working on so I think uh, if that is required for, of course, as you said, we uh, things start from defense in a way because defense has the maturity or the requirement per se of the security which nobody else has. They are they are differently. I mean, required by law and by uh, by interoperable uh, or non-interoperable nature of the operation that do. Okay. Good. So interesting part is, you know, the capability what you build in one domain, you know, you, you could replicate in multiple domain and most of the technologies are nowadays dual use. It just cannot be, you know, segregated. Yeah. It is only for defense, only for uh, yeah. BFSI. Uh, I know you, you came from a hardcore semicon background, yeah. you know. Right? Now the guys who are sitting here, how did you make money in this business? If they want to start something, not to compete with you, something similar yeah. in this space, what they should do? Yeah, I think uh, uh, in semiconductor space specifically, it takes long time. Okay, so it takes like, for us it took like five years to be where we are to file some patents and get across. So you need to work with the customer very closely. I mean, that is across semiconductor, across any other domain as well. But in semiconductor, it pays a little bit more because the, because the, the gestation period is so high that your barrier to entry is very different okay but the application that you are working over here it may be I mean the barrier may be that high depending on your IP that you produce okay or may not be that different barrier level of entry but you need to work with your customer very closely because their specs change requirements change and the compliance uh, so many other things are there so my observation so far has been working with the customer very very closely and reacting to them like Okay, I'll tell you one other product that we did. So we went for some other product demonstration to certain, okay, and we told, okay, this is what we have done. They told, okay, this is what you have done, fine, all that. Okay, you show the demonstration. It took three months just to demonstrate, okay, what we have done, okay, on the demonstration part, because they wanted to get into the algorithm, see the encrypted code, non-encrypted code, match it in many different ways, what they expected. But while we were doing the demonstration of certain product, they told, can you do this thing for us? Why not? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we took some uh, tangential approach and do did something out of it, and that made a product. And that is our first sale, actually, to certain. So you have to be close to the customer, listen to the customer, them as fast as you can, because 
today they may give you the business okay but after some time their thoughts may be different so the faster you come back to them to satisfy their current requirement is the best way to do it good thank you yeah most important thing is know your customer close to the customer and uh, be dependable to the customer and, I mean, and that's the most important thing customer should feel you are a dependable guy that is one <laughs> thing and you have to understand who is sending the check also okay yep <laughs> okay. <laughs> good with this you, you uh, have to be on that yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me turn to uh, romit uh romit is somebody who probably would use the kind of products our man uh, creates i'm not think i think you are not using his products but your expertise is more on the usage pattern please your use please yeah so yeah so that's frankly uh, right what you're saying um so we make uh, use of the products or whatever ips uh they develop uh, on the chip so when we have arm processor um, over there and arm has a particular trust zone okay so we make use of this trust zone to create a, a trusted execution environment and run this in run in this trusted execution environment we run the applications so the data which is getting generated uh, like you say about coming to the topic device security so when the application your mobile application is running on a on a device uh, and we run onto a trusted execution environment uh, the data which is getting generated from this are uh, are encrypted with the trust zone keys created over them so that's what we we try to bring in uh, the security piece of it wherein uh, the current semiconductors or current chips which are available they have this trust zone available but how to use this trust zone is actually an uh, i mean it's it's where we come in place so we we help organizations to use this trust zone create a uh, something called as confidential computing uh, based out of this and uh, or maybe a trusted execution environment of it and load this applications over there so that your application which is running over there they are uh, it cannot be hacked or it cannot be tampered the data which is getting generated from it are encrypted in nature at the source so while in transit it would not be hacked it and it is not dependent on your tls or those kind of even even that channel also it's because it's been encrypted from the source itself so that's where we try to you make use of the of the ready available uh, technology or ip uh, with the chip providers create uh, or maybe the ips which are of uh, Uh, which has been used inside the chip for the trust zone and those environments and make sure we uh, work on this environment for that okay coming back to uh, where you you said about you know create using the trusted model i mean i'll come to the next speaker about how to create that uh, but then uh, i have one question to you what is your revenue model eh? how do you make money out of this because if those who are sitting here they wanted to start some business in this space uh you can throw some pointers because a lot of money is there a lot of action is happening uh i'm not asking you to create your you know you know disclose your secrets but then <laughs> no it's i mean it's i mean it's not secret or i mean nothing like that as a secret uh, what we started doing is we created hardware security module uh wherein uh, we had there was an international competitions with us which were there already selling this kind of products over there but no one was there in india who can develop this kind of solution and provide as a at a quite a good and in an efficient way to the customers uh, so we created this uh, there was a there was a need of it which we understood and then we created it we of course what mohan said is right that we have to understand the customer be in touch with the customer because their needs are very critical so based on those those needs this got created which is hardware security module which is wherein we we store the encryption keys which can protect all your data so currently everybody in the i mean if you see the startup ecosystem or whatever ecosystem is been used across is everybody is talking about data protection data privacy and uh, using of this thing but how you will be protecting the encryption key uh, which is where we come in place and we give our our hsms uh, so the keys can be protected in a highest protected way uh, it's it's in a temper evident uh, which are again based on some standards and uh, this standards make sure that the 
data which has been encrypted with this particular uh, kind of technique cannot be hacked or cannot be decrypted Good. kind of thing. That's what we try to do it across. Thank you, Romit. Now I'll turn towards uh, Vikas. Uh, if you look at, you know, Arm as a company, I am not aware of any other company in this world probably has got this much impact, you know, in semiconductor industry. Probably you may not have, uh, you know, own stamp or anything, but then every stamp, if you look at, you open it, Arm is there behind it, right? Uh, your views, please. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, uh, one of the best things that can happen is somebody else talking about your company, right? I mean, so uh, thank you uh, there. But um, keeping it um, really true to the um, topic today in terms of the sector and the role of semiconductor security, uh, one of the things that is absolutely um, what, what actually drives us is to ensure that we are a part of compute no matter where it happens. And when we say that uh, we are... A we should be a part of compute. Um, there are two things which actually rock my boat in the sense that two things that actually impact every single professional standing here in the room today. One of the things is, um, and one less than the other, because the one of the things is trust and the other thing is paranoia. And uh, when you think about security, um, these are the two things that which will make a profession actually uh, in the secure domain, essentially, who are people who are standing here. So if you, if you are interested in, say, security, uh, you need to have that paranoia, and also you don't have to have any trust. So uh, the, that is one of the things. And when you're looking at uh, building compute as such, um, trust is the smallest factor, the most important value driver for us uh, to enable freedom so that innovations like what Rumit is building or Mohan is building today uh, can get used easily across the financial sectors, across hospitals, across uh, pervasive compute, wherever you use it. So essentially, if I don't build trust today with my system, um, I do not accept any of these uh, um, uh, security, uh, you know, uh, startups which are actually working on the software domain. So essentially, I could say that I don't believe in what you're building on top. And... Um, that would probably break the entire system. So it's also important for the operating system and the kernels which are actually using the compute to completely trust its um, the way it is being built. And that's where the crux of this entire ecosystem lies, uh, building it as a root of trust, as the foundational thing. And we try to uh, look at uh, building foundational compute right from the start, where we actually uh, start thinking about where is the use case, what is the use case, and how are we protecting compute, data, code, anything which is working in, how are we looking at uh, protecting it, shielding it from any malware. And we start looking at that as the primary area right from the root of the hardware. And that's where the importance of semiconductor device security lies. So that is the area that I would probably um, be most passionate about also. Um, essentially compute, but on a side role, yes, because the paranoia and trust factor is really important for me to look at the financial sector mostly. Thank you. I think I, I have one question to you. You know, for your division, what is the revenue model? Where, I mean, where, <laughs> how do you guys survive? So um, it's very hard to talk. It's probably way beyond my pay grade. I am a small cog in the wheel. <laughs> I would probably not even look at it at this moment. Um, I think one of the aspects of pervasive compute is making it really accessible. And um, uh, I don't think anything pays more than the trust of your partners, your ecosystem, and all of these people who are actually building applications on top of what you are building. So I think that's the biggest payment that you would generally get. Yeah, that's what yep. is the I, revenue model there. So you use the word trust. Since I come from the defense industry, now we, we have been tra trained from the early days, three letters, TBV. Trust, but verify. Hmm. Whomever I meet today, my, my early interactions in 90s taught me that lesson. And uh, uh, because since we are in that business, my networks, my phone, my machines, I'm talking about 20 years back, it used to hit hacked. So today we are extremely careful and uh, the word trust is the foundation of today's business. Anywhere you go, 
So I think as a company which is into creating trust, I'm sure you know there's not lot more to be done in that space. Yeah. So uh, essentially, if you look at the stack all the way from uh, uh, from where it is being built all the way ground down. So one of the things that we uh, realize is that um, uh, as we build uh, specifically areas on around hardware security uh, that we talked about for uh, especially in the BFSI sector now going as deep and down as a smart card security uh, where uh, a couple of years back a simple anecdote I saw somebody break a simple credit card debit card uh, in less than an hour with sophisticated attacks. Right, and um, that way of how you would probably start thinking about security across domains. And this is tomorrow if you're a chip, if you're you know uh, the uh, uh, artificial uh, pacemaker fails just because somebody is able to access it online, you would probably not feel safe. And especially, and your financial transactions if it fails because somebody was able to access the root of trust, and uh, that would that would probably be very harmful. Uh, so, because you don't have to worry, today yeah. school kids are doing it using open source exactly. tools, eh? if, sitting in their classrooms. So with this, let me come back to Teja. Uh, I really appreciate him for inviting because to be frank, he was supposed to be the moderator. You know, he just pulled me to this chair. So I, I appreciate for, you know, taking that risk, you know. Uh, now we have, uh, we heard from three speakers, yeah. one guy talking about hardware level security creation, somebody using that for his business, and someone who is overlaying all these things. Teja as an ecosystem guy, all three plays a major role when yeah. it is placed at the right place. Yeah, yeah. What is your views? Sure. So uh, before um, I share my views, I would like to essentially share, uh, not share, as in tell one thing. You initially started by saying, um, let's say, Vikas is the one who makes money out of uh, these two, two folks. But in fact, I see you making money out of all three <laughs> folks together. <laughs> so with that, um, um, uh, one thing that I, we, let me tell the DSCS perspective on, on essentially hardware, um, hardware space and why we started what we started. So this essentially started um, way back in 2017, 2018 pay when we started National Center of Excellence, wherein we thought key um, startups uh, needed a dedicated uh, support ecosystem. Uh, when we started NCOA, there are 30 startups hardly uh, in the country in pr building cyber products. Now we have almost 350 of them. So um, we started NCOA and then uh, we looked at um, essentially a lot of small startups trying to build uh, um, IoT products because it's still picking up. And uh, we've uh, honestly tried to fit uh, what NCOA did and then uh, to see if they can do, if NCOA can, can help uh, hardware companies as well. But we realized hardware itself need a very different sort of um, hardware embedded security uh, needs a very different sort of approach that it's it's very different from normal general cyber security in terms of let's say resources, in terms of um, what you have, in terms of number of devices um, that are deployed across let's say different architectures and so on and so forth. And then we started to look at what is there within the country and we felt key there is very small niche ecosystem and that ecosystem needs a very uh, focused effort. So. We started by mapping um, um, the companies uh, that are working, uh, essentially um, the likes of Fire2, Chip Spirit, um, GSA, and others. And then we've uh, we've built um, around a model on um, how we can help. But then we also realized maybe DSCI itself can't just help uh, because this is very much a research-driven um, uh, uh, the field. For example, when you look at side channels or fault injections or anything of that sort. Um, you look at, for example, something like Riscure or Secure IC, all these companies. So all of them, uh, their CTOs are at the end of the day professors. So we've looked at um, what is there in the, um, academia, uh, in the academia ecosystem. And then we've uh, took IIT Khadakpur and IIT Madras into conference. And then essentially together we have uh, such a good, um, um, you know, folks uh, within the team. So DSCI bringing all the industry together, startups together. Um, and then we have IIT Khadakpur and IIT Madras uh, uh,
essentially bringing the technical excellence and, and know-how. Um, and then again, again, we pitched it to Mighty and Mighty loves the idea. Mighty is funding this initiative. So what is it that we do, right? Essentially, we try to build ecosystem. Essentially, we don't focus on, let's say, okay, in the context of a side channel. We, we look at what is it that we have to do as a country to uh, build in capabilities within the country on semiconductor and and we are very happy to see um, uh, the uh, the whole um, indian semiconductor mission and then we are in in, in talks with uh, different players um, be it lnt and others to see uh, what research interventions are required uh, in 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 those areas for example um, side channel resistance uh, building into the hardware cores itself before they are they, they are um, um, taped out so essentially how do how do one go about doing that um, post quantum hardware cores uh, how do you go about building them and so on and so forth we we are trying to build an ecosystem of people companies uh, products within the country and then more importantly we are engaged in building the uh, uh, workforce next gen workforce through different initiatives be it training uh, be it uh, very focused uh, capture the flag um, competitions uh, using hardware at the core of it so that's essentially uh, uh, the dsci's side of the story we see a lot of success stories uh, be it um, chip spirit and gsa soft obviously and also pi r2 the likes of pi r2 who are now quite mature they have hardware io and others so we uh, some of our efforts uh, we are starting to uh, see uh, bearing fruit and um, now our focus is also um, uh, trying to build an um, ecosystem within the big bigger players uh, like the likes of texas instruments arm and others and see what we can do with them and then how our indian companies can help working with uh, these big folks essentially that's uh, ecosystem side of things that we do as a country see it's in that context na one of the challenges which i see is uh, i've been working as a ecosystem player for a long time anything new comes skill is a challenge uh, particularly academia, we all blame academia, academia will blame industry, it's a blame game. We've been going on for decades. Yeah. Uh, how do you see we fixing it? Yeah, very um, interesting question. Essentially, uh, academia and uh, industry bridge is, is a very big thing and uh, even different ministries try to tackle it and they could not. So, what DSCI did, essentially one of the mandates of the hardware security initiative is to bring, um, because academia honestly works in silos and industry works in, in their own silo and they don't talk to each other. So uh, one of the things, one of the several initiatives that we do is essentially bringing the academia and industry together in different forums. So essentially, um, uh, if you look at the previous uh, uh, panel, um, Dr. Prasanna comes purely from academic uh, perspective. So we try to build uh, that relationships uh, with the pro academia community and the, uh, and, and the industry community uh, through our primarily our events. But more importantly, what we do is that we have a very good um, a team that tracks the research that is happening across the country. So um, one uh, one of the best examples that I could good, uh, that I could give is uh, again uh, with GSASoft. So they came to us with a problem statement: we want to build um, something of our own. So and we have uh, worked behind the scenes uh, from a long time, much before they asked this question. We know uh, we mapped out the capabilities uh, with the academy ecosystem. The biggest challenge that we feel is es essentially. Um, it all comes down to IP. So essentially, academia wants to have their own IP and the industry uh, wants to keep that IP. And we did this exercise with uh, Mohan also. Uh, when it comes to obfuscation, we have we know of very good uh, a researcher who wants to do obfuscation. So we we try to bring them together uh, in different ways. Uh, I, we track uh, build that relationship with the academia, and then we obviously work very closely with industry. And whenever there's a, a mutual collaboration opportunity, we ensure that these guys both talk to each other through our platform, and then from there uh, take it up. There is one thing I'd like to add here. If you know about C2S program, that is Chips to Startup program. So Chipspeed is working with the IIT Bombay on developing a chip, semiconductor-based chip for the Navic application. So it's like not only security-based because it is a different domain in a manner, but a semiconductor is the base. So we want to tape out a chip in this December 24. There is a tape out and there is another tape out. So we are working with and similarly there are like 13 companies in India who were selected to work with different IITs and different other programs. So this is mighty initiative, but I think maybe DSA also helped there. So Okay, I yeah. think before we turn the audience, is there any questions from the audience? 
Otherwise, I will continue my questions to the panelists. If anybody would like to ask the question, please raise your hands. You have a chance. My question to you guys is, you know, in, in software space, it's a common issue. But not many people know that, you know, hardware also can be attacked, right? And uh, many times it never got noticed. Even in the software space also, whenever I discuss this subject, many people tell me, Shinto, we are using not an antivirus. Eh? They say we are using antivirus. I said, I feel pity of you that, you know, probably, of course, there are only two types of companies in this world. Either they are aware of their hacked or not even aware of hacked. And so there is nothing in between. That is the world which we are living in. So in this context, uh, the hardware attacks, if at all it happens, I know you cannot prevent it. How do we handle it? The second question somebody could take up, what are the ways, you know, we can address it? Particularly on the hardware attacks, this is a very interesting question. It's also kind of a nice topic to talk about. So um, to give you and simplify how it kind of works, um, uh, you know that it's a, all a digital system at some point of time. Um, there is uh, a power supply which we need to um, supply to make it work. Now, um, it, is a, it is essentially a digital system. So you see a transaction happening within the device and these information which radiates through a power pattern up on your security IC is easily read across by small um, detectors on top. And through sophisticated attacks with either AI or statistical methods or many such uh, methods, you could really uh, run an analysis and decipher codes which are hard baked into the device. So this is at the crux of simplifying what I'm trying to say on, on how hardware can be attacked, but this is not just the case. Now there are ways that we know that these are all uh, nanoscale chips which are actually very, very small. The uh, the the transfer happens through a transfer of charge uh, which get excited with anything as a strong laser. People inject faults to see how the system will behave. And when the system behaves in a different manner, this manner is recorded and again a statistical analysis run on top. So there are ways to play with clocks, there are ways to uh, play with reset trees, there are ways to, uh, ways to play with uh, uh, EM emanations uh, which are emanated from the device. So really um, with the advent of AI, with the machine learning, now the cycle time of actually breaking down these through sophisticated hardware attacks has reduced drastically and that is one of the most dangerous things that can happen to uh, design and then I think um, all of our efforts today is involved in trying to not just obfuscate in, in terms of how we build the cryptography inside but also you know uh, do either some amount of uh, work on shielding or some amount of work on uh, reducing the emanation pattern making a really low power um, and things like those so there are many which ways which hardware security uh, is vulnerable um, there is and it is never completely safe we need to keep on iterating keep on testing keep on certifying and checking and that is the crux of what hardware attacks are. Uh, Probably like even add. doing a risk analysis, based it, on that you decide what kind of, because you cannot, uh, you know, always look at investing heavily. You know, you yeah. invest 1,000 crores to save uh, 1 crore. Practically, <laughs> it doesn't work. That, that's the important thing about security. It is not just the cost. It is repute. So uh, you could lose money, but once you lose reputation, you are basically gone. I just wanted to add to what uh, uh, Vikas just said. So the, he talked about DPA attacks, that is differential power analysis attacks. So there are power signatures on the line, okay, when you do the key transaction. Okay, so with that power signature, some analyzer can analyze, okay, right now key is being transferred. And with different uh, signatures and different type of pattern they will give. And if key is being transferred, this is the key. So with this type of attack, they will get the key. But there are ways to handle it, which are ultimately implemented within the RTL code. So there are codes which we design, we write on the uh, semiconductor actually. Okay, it's not just circuits. But the circuits are going through some, there's so much, so many things there, okay. So by the way, but those codes are written in a manner that the what he said is power is less. 
but the main thing is differential is less. High or less, that is one thing. But the difference of the power, when you are transacting a key or you are transacting a normal transaction, the signature should be very, very different. I mean, very much similar to that. Okay, so you cannot say well, right now key is being transferred, so I can capture the key, or right now key is not being transferred, I cannot capture the key. So those type of attacks are there, and there are ways to prevent it within what he mentioned is shielding is one way, which are the shielding on the board level or on within the semiconductor devices. But as you also mentioned, okay, you don't want to spend thousand crore to save ten crores or something. But there are ways. I think in the previous tra pre previous uh, panel also they were telling that you have to choose where you have to invest appropriately. Okay, as a reputation may be a concern depending on the company or the stake, what are at stake or the defense or anything like that. So there are ways to prevent, there are ways to identify them, which are somewhat existing today. I mean, in India, it is, I think, still coming up. So we are not yet at the level of, uh, I will say, uh, maybe I'm wrong, okay, I want to, uh, but uh, maybe get more knowledge about it. But to understand, to un I mean, that, that is their understanding is there. Prevention is also there. Some things are inbuilt. Some things can be over, I mean, overlapped on that. Yeah. You want to add something? Uh, I mean, yeah. So, uh, especially uh, in the context of the financial sectors, like like I talked about the smart card. Now, even trading systems for ma uh, for that matter, right? Now, you are looking at, um, you know, settlement times less than a day. There is high frequency trading happening. Um, uh, there are... Um, there are these spoofing attacks which actually happen, which can actually monitor your ask bid rates and you know um, change things. So these are all happening at the hardware level. And uh, whoever is closer, less latency, you can access these boards. Uh, these are all areas which are which are very very uh, prevalent today. Um, one thing that I would like to add essentially is um, you asked about if there are any mitigation for hardware attack, right? Essentially, although a lot of these are, are followed, at the end of the day, uh, there is always some sort of attack that you don't know um, that will break your hardware uh, at one point or the other. And essentially, what you are trying to do in hardware security is that you are trying to make um, uh, the job of the attacker or the cost of attack much higher. So, um, I'll give you some... Uh, very real examples. I, I can't take the name of the company. So there's a there's a true random number generator um, that that should have been random. One of the one of the things that IIT Kharagpur did was that they they took this TRNG. Uh, it is working fine in a normal room setting. They just uh, put it into a minus 20 degrees temperature chamber, and it is no longer true random number. So essentially, you, let's say uh, something that goes in, and this is a certified product. This is not essentially a research IP. Um, and similarly, just a couple of days ago, there, there's a, there's a, there are folks out, based out of Pune. Uh, the, the guy calls me and then says, hey, look, we were able to break an uh, ECU that that goes into automotive. Uh, and it, it came from um, Renesas. The the uh, the um, um, the chip chip manufacturer is Renesas, and then they they were able to extract the 16 byte um, complete uh, recovery key, even though everything is locked. Essentially, this is uh, through essentially voltage glitching. Um, we think it is uh, not there. Very few devices will face it. But the reality is, uh, uh, some of the products that very big manufacturer did, uh, let's say um, the phone manufacturer that you have probably in your in your in your pocket. So one of the products that they have um, that they made still in in the market, um, it is vulnerable to uh, um, uh, essentially like a voltage glitching using which attackers were able to extract the complete IP of the co code of of the manufacturer. Um, Imagine this happening to a defense use case. Uh, essentially, you have your complete IP of the what is happening in a device that brings with it the crypto libraries and whatnot. It's it's a very big risk. And honestly, if that hardware risk is there, there is no mitigation that you can do. You can't. You can It's not like a software that you can patch uh, unless you remove the hardware and then put a new one. There's nothing anyone can do. So that's once detected, there is no mitigation in the context of hardware. So I think we had a very uh, interesting discussion uh, going on. Before I conclude, security, if you ask me, it is a horizontal subject. Any domain you take, it is a hot topic. So the expertise what you build, a product what you build, could be easily customized for multiple domains. I have an interesting example from the previous panel. We have a guy from uh, 
Bosh, I worked with this team on drone testing standards from a cyber security perspective. Same guys are working on automotive cyber security. Six years back, after getting some direction uh, from NSA, a couple of government guys contacted me. They said, can automotive cyber security from a national security perspective? Ah, oh, okay. It is happening today. Cars can be used as a weapon on the road, right? So that's the world which we are living in. At least six years back, somebody out there started thinking at the government, so it is good. So same with the uh, banking, BFSA sector also. We, we, this is a critical sector where a lot of data, a lot of money and trust is involved. Having indigenous capability, having own apna companies, startup, there is a lot more in the terms of not only just making money, self-reliance. I use the word self-reliance in today's geopolitical scenario because if something goes wrong, I'll tell you, uh, probably X country will say, we will not support you. Finished. The whole, yeah, the whole country stops. So it's very important that you know we become self-reliant as well as uh, financial sector is concerned, not just money alone. It's our reputation, it's our uh, existence. Uh, before we conclude, any final remarks from any one of you? Yeah, I think one thing you said regarding the, and you were mentioning regarding the types of attacks, right? The other things are like, I was working with Intel for nearly 15 years, okay? So the Intel chips and everything, all the semiconductor that we do, or even the software that you do, you have debug hooks, you have some debug paths, okay? So there are debug paths which are attacked by the attackers to access to the uh, data stored in the flash memory. So if they get open your mobile or your laptop, the digit password, they have the access to your whole system. Okay, so that is the type of attacks which, uh, of course, Intel will not give them the signatures, okay, but those are the types of things which maybe the attackers use, yeah, and attack. But the cost of attack is a different aspect. Right. Yeah. So thank you. I think uh, these guys deserve a big clap, you know. They complemented each other. They are here in case anyone would like to interact post-session, we'll be available. Thank you. Once again, thanking to uh, DCI for inviting all of us. Glad to be here. Thank you.